Hi everyone and welcome back to my tech talk. So within this channel, as you know, I like to cover all the tech news and kind of updates. And today we'll, we're going to do a recap of the WWDC Apple conference, which uh, happened at the 10th of June. And Apple have introduced quite a lot of cool things on that conference. And I think that, you know, if you are a person who is interested, you can actually grab it yourself and, you know, see all the details, etc. But I'm going to give you a quick re recap of what exactly happened. So stay tuned, because obviously um, I see that Apple started with kind of their uh, strongest kind of thing, which is the um, Apple Vision. So within the Apple Vision, Apple actually introduced the um, cool um, kind of new, I would say, uh, OS. But the truth be told, there is not much news happening in there. So we can see that um, you have you can now create the spatial photos, which it's pretty strange thing. You can actually see how it looks. So spatial photos looks a bit weird. Like I can see that, uh, you know, they're actually using two different cameras to kind of grab it like a, like an image in the depth. So they're kind of looking into the old avatar thinking of 3D. I'm not sure if that's going to go the good direction, but I can see they're actually, you know, trying to go for it. We can also know that this mode, uh, ooh, this mode will be available um, on the um, iPhone 15 Pro, as they mentioned on the conference itself. So another cool things which are still happening to Vision OS, which makes me actually think about, you know, comparing to the first version, is looking on the travel mode on trains. The funny thing is that they mentioned it but they haven't shared any details. I wonder like how they want to create that experience on the train, but I think it's decent. And they're looking also on obviously uh, enhancing the virtual display and making it bigger. So yeah, I think it's a nice upgrade to that Vision OS. Obviously it's not working perfectly yet. We can see a lot of you know users are saying, well, it's great. Some of the users are saying, oh, it's not that great. But well, I think it's definitely a good direction. So another uh, thing, which is the iOS and Apple have introduced a feature which allows you to drag the apps on the bottom of the screen and even on the side of the screen. Wait, didn't Android had it like six years ago, eight years ago? Well, that's not really an innovation, Apple, but well, we're really glad that you actually put it there. Another thing which I do like, which I think is pretty cool, is it allows you to actually change the tint of the icons. So you can color the icons in the color that kind of you like, maybe have a cover on and, you know, swap it to blue, green, etc. Use the RGB mode or just put it on the dark mode. I think this is actually a pretty cool feature because it makes it more customizable. So another thing which um, Apple also have introduced is the option to lock an app. And this is actually a pretty cool feature because um, it will literally allow you to lock the app. So in case someone is using your phone or maybe your wife or your partner and you don't want them to see all the stuff which you have on the app, you can easily uh, lock it and hide it. So the second thing which I saw that added, you can actually hide the app as well. So it's not visible uh, on the screen. I think that's pretty decent feature when it comes to those. Like for example, he's showing this, he's, showing, he's hiding the hair track pro app. I don't know what's that about, but well, let's keep going. With some things, I think Apple is catching up and, you know, kind of um, bringing the attention to the old things and trying to introduce them as new. Apple did that in the in the past, so we see it's happening again. But this time I saw a very funny thing. So they actually said that they introducing a new feature in messages. So you can now, from now on, with the new iOS 18, you will be able to drum roll schedule messages. And I think that's something which, you know, Android does for like, I don't know for how long, like you can do it on, you know, majority of the apps like Messenger, Telegram, etc. So it's not really a big thing, but well, well done Apple for bringing that over here. What was I really surprised about is the new feature which allows you to send messages via the satellite. And we can see that in iOS 18, they will introduce messages via the satellite for the times when the cellular 
and Wi-Fi connections aren't available. So this is powered by the same groundbreaking technology existing iPhone satellite capabilities. So you'll be it, it will prompt the user to connect to their nearest satellite right from the messages app to send and receive text with the dynamic island. So keep pointing at the satellite and satellite connected and it will give you i messages sent via satellite are end-to-end -end encrypted like omg that's actually a pretty cool function like so in a way maybe one day we don't really need the wi-fi or the uh, kind of carrier to keep the basic connection well we'll see how it goes so with that iOS, we also uh, saw the options for the hiking in the map. So you'll be able to create your trail. You'll be able to use the journal mode, which allows you to kind of journal and write your thoughts every day. There'll be an also option to kind of exchange cash with uh, other iPhone users and without any sharing any details, which I think it's pretty cool thing. And uh, yeah, that's I think kind of about it when it comes to the iOS uh, upgrade. So regarding the next thing, which I actually personally very much liked, which is the um, AirPods. So actually AirPods is the thing which I used for a long time, um, kind of, it, it's brilliant headphones. And I think the design of those, it's pretty cool. So on the WWDC, they haven't introduced the um, kind of new AirPods, but they introduced the new features of AirPods and I think this is pretty uh, surprising as um, obviously like we have often situations where you know we are busy where we cannot really do some things uh, so now the Siri supports an option to reply with a nod yeah like not literally a nod so you can actually um, nod yes or no to reply and actually you know you know what let me show you how does it look like from what apple have showed us so you are oh wait this and that i'm gonna give you the sound answer the conversation back call from right. bam gam answer it okay Air that's pretty cool right i think that's you know, something which um, it's definitely going good direction. Uh, Apple's definitely taking it to the um, kind of, a, you know, good uh, way. And another thing which um, also they introduced is the voice uh, kind of cancellation. So, uh, sorry, noise cancellation, voice cancellation, like OMG. And the feature itself, it's actually called a voice isolation. So you can definitely see how sometimes my names remembering works. Sorry for that. So voice isolation. And I think it's a pretty cool feature because uh, it will actually cancel out the uh, environment. And previously it was working already pretty good. But now I can see that Apple is going even step further. So let me actually show you how does it uh, look. And let me just show you this one. And it's right here. Oh, hey. I was just about to call you. The meeting went so well. Also, sorry, it's really noisy. Can you hear me okay? That's amazing news. And yeah, I can hear you totally. That's pretty decent, right? So this is the quality that they're kind of going for. And um, if this would work like that, I love it. I think that's a huge plus for, uh, you know, the new um, AirPods and for the iOS. That's literally one of the things which kind of convincing me to go back to Apple a bit more. But actually, at the end of this video, I have one more thing which will show you, which, yeah, for me, it's like a big thing. Stay tuned. So regarding audio and home, I see that they kind of went for the uh, upgrades for their uh, kind of home option, device uh, voice isolation, AirPods. Uh, you can now connect more devices to the home app and also enhance dialogue on TV, etc. And they introduced a function in the Apple Originals, which allows you to see the cast and the current song of the, um, you know, of the scene. Well, I think it's decent, but let's be honest, we could see the cast on Amazon Prime and others like a few years ago. But like seeing a song that still skips my um, Spotify or Shazam kind of quickly. Hey, Siri or hey, Google, what is that song? So I think that's all right. 
With Wood OS, they actually added just a few things, not much of a big thing. So you have the vitals now. The vitals kind of checks your overnight vitals and daily vitals to check how you perform. You also have the training loads and uh, there are some custom workouts for, for example, pool swimming. There's an option for the double tap uh, API, which literally allows you to control your, your Apple Watch like that. So you can tap it uh, instead of just, you know, going for this. If you, you only have one hand and this is the hand with your watch, you can e e immediately change something. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, but there is not much more on that, uh, you know, Apple Watch kind of big changes. When it comes to the iPad OS, we can actually see quite a lot of improvements. So obviously with screen sharing, that's something which I definitely think that it should be there a while ago, but they introduced the smart script. And this is a feature which for me, as a person who has awful handwriting, like literally my handwriting is encrypted by default. So it's not awful, it's encrypted. So with that, with that smart script, I think for people like me, um, it's an amazing feature. Let me actually show you how does it work because I think it's actually pretty decent. So with the smart script, I can see that it will be able to kind of make your uh, handwriting a bit more visible. So if you're kind of not writing great, uh, Apple will slightly change it for you to make it more visible, nicely kind of uh, stylized, etc. But there are other cool functions of it as well, because um, you can also like, you know, paste um, things which you copied. So you can copy and paste what you did. You can also do spell checking on your handwriting. And that's, I think it's pretty amazing. Another thing which uh, it's definitely cool is that you can move it around. So you can actually add it. Something which, you know, sometimes on the paper you would wish you had had. But well, another thing is the uh, removing. So you can actually quickly remove. Wait, we actually missed that. So we're right here and this is this. So removing it allows you to quickly kind of scratch something and move it further. And I think that's pretty decent because you know, thanks to it, uh, you can actually still make your lovely handwritten notes in a more digitalized way. So that's about it when it comes to the iPad OS. And um, now going to the Mac OS. So Apple have introduced the Mac OS Sequoia, and this will be the new um, OS on the Macs, which introduces some uh, Kind of, I think, adjustments, but not that much, I would say, because we can see that, you know, you can do math notes, which one note can do for a very long time. You can have basic text effects, some highlights in Safari. There will be in passwords app. So that's actually something which, you know, might replace people who are using things like Proton or maybe Bitwarden, etc. You have a presenter view, the hiking maps, and also Apple Pay on the third party browser. And there'll be also an iPhone mirroring, so you can actually do things on your iPhone while it's nearby connected to your Wi Fi. That's a pretty cool function. So um, that's kind of it when it comes to the Mac OS. I don't see much of um, kind of changes, but there is a one last thing which we will now move to, and I think that's the biggest thing which actually Apple introduced. So the last thing, and I think this is the biggest thing, as I mentioned, uh, which Apple has introduced, which actually, you know, really took me in, is the Apple intelligence. So this is like an um, AI and a chat GPT built into your phone. And I think this is something which is totally um, kind of revolutionizing Apple. And I'm going to record a separate video just about that. And right now I'm just going to give you a short kind of recap of what it does. So with the basic features of the um, Apple intelligence, you can do similar things to what ChatGPT can do, but kind of it's built in into your um, Mac, which uh, makes it, you know, very, very easy and uh, kind of Oh, no, it's, I wouldn't say affordable, but like uh, easy way of using, right? So um, what is that? So you will be able to do the kind of basic things from um, kind of uh, Apple intelligence and it works like ChatGPT. So what do I mean by that? So you can uh, now with the um, uh, Apple intelligence, you'll be able to rewrite, you'll be able to uh, kind of change the uh, stories, rewrite, summarize, uh, put notes. So this is kind of how it looks. So you can easily within inside the email, you can ask it for a rewrite or you can do proofread or you can um, change it to the, the tone for the friendly, professional, concise, or put some summary, give you the key points or just put in the table. So 
this is a pretty cool thing because it brings the chat GPT capabilities kind of into your um into your you know device into your OS and the kind of a thing which allows that it's kind of combining everything so now they did that you don't only have to talk to Siri but you can actually chat to Siri which makes it make Siri your personal chat GPT because what they did they also connected the chat GPT to Siri, which uh, honestly, it's pretty bold and a pretty cool move because it allows you to um, kind of speak to Siri and write to Siri the same way as you would write to ChatGPT. But this will also kind of take your personal information like calendar, you can, you know, you know immediately schedule things. And you can have it also in the conversational way, kind of similar to what I introduced on the video, which talks about the ChatGPT 4.0. And I think this is the direction that Apple is going. So check it out. I'll be also doing a separate video about the Apple intelligence itself, because I, I think it's such a cool feature that it deserves the video. But um, this literally kind of convinced me that it might be time to come back to Apple. Maybe. A big maybe. So, um... We can see that, you know, with that Apple intelligence, um, it gives you the capabilities which most of the um, kind of uh, app don't give you. Even ChatGPT cannot give you such a, the things like, for example, on-screen awareness. So you can quickly find the, for example, photo that you're looking for. This um, person looking right now for um, a pink, uh, a photo with a pink jacket or something like that. And well, the, sorry it's right here uh, and it will immediately show them the photo and what you can do you can Im immediately use the siri and to kind of pop the photo change the brightness etc without actually adjusting it which honestly that's pretty unbelievable and i think that you know going that direction Apple might be making a big moves. And also we can see that Apple is doing uh, some image generation. So we can see that um, with the Apple intelligence, um, you will be able to also generate graphics like, you know, DALI, CVTI or Leonardo. And we can see that Apple is making their own kind of version. So you will be able to kind of combine different themes like parties, chef and a cat, which will then generate an image through AI, right? And I think that's uh, kind of the way which people will definitely love because you can generate that immediately within your messages. So instead of just sending um, uh, just a random, you know, emoji, you can just put that it needs to be a sunset, Brooklyn rooftop and dinner party theme, and then will immediately generate a photo containing those. You can put the uh, style, as I can see, animation, illustration, sketch, so it kind of however you like to see. And I think this image generation, it might be a bit of a game changer. I love those kind of features. I often test the AI features like that. So I think that the direction that Apple is going here, wow, it's pretty revolutionary. And you know, with that, I think it's pretty amazing. So another thing is obviously mm, like they're looking into introducing that into their notes mode so we can see that they have the option for for example the um, magic ones oh sorry so for the magic ones let me actually show you that now so the magic wand will allow you for example if you have let's say a sketch of something uh, let me go back uh you can use the magic wands and then it will actually pick up what's on the sketch and with that it, it will kind of ask you okay this is this this then that would you like to create it boom and it's done i think that's a decent thing and the last thing which um, i'm also going to mention is kind of the um, searching for a specific uh, phrase specific picture so you can actually search for a specific picture like maya skateboarding in a this shirt or having a sticker on their face and it will search through videos and photos so that's obviously like a question of privacy, like how private we are right now with our data, but it's definitely a huge kind of plus when it comes to the technology usage, because um, I can see that um, you will be also able to generate the videos. So kind of the same way as, uh, you know, people are creating, you know, um, you know, videos with the ChatGPT, or sorry, with CapCut and some other kind of automated ways. I see that um, Apple is going for creating memory movies. So um, you can kind of put a script that I want to see a Leo 
learning to fish and making a big catch, pl please put it to some, I don't know, water picture, etc. And we'll grab all the pictures and videos and then create a video from it. That's, and you know, a video means like a memories video, kind of like if you, if you have an iPhone, you know how they work. So it's like a slideshow-ish, which uh, shows you uh, like, you know, videos and photos connected with some nice music. But still, I think it's a very decent because um, you can, you, you know, you can easily showcase kind of things to your family and your friends. Um, well, you know, just doing that in just a few simple steps. And the last thing uh, which um, I wanted to mention, but I also going to cover that on the separate um, big uh, video about it, is that um, the... Um, Apple Intelligence actually connects to the ChatGPT. So um, you can use it the same way as you would use ChatGPT. So you can ask Siri uh, or type to Siri and ask them the same questions. All right, this is it. Just 20 minutes, quick recap of what exactly happened on WWDC. So you don't have to watch the whole two hours keynote. And I think this is pretty cool thing. So see you in the next video. And remember, if you like it, just leave a like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Take care.